Hi everyone, happy Thursday. I am here with you today to present our live event on how shooter detection systems help improve actor shooter protocols. So today I have with me Brian John Pauly, but really quickly before we get to his introduction, we'll just go through the uh, agenda for today. And the agenda for today um, is on the screen now. And so we are gonna do quick overview, introductions, Brian is then going to present on shooter detection systems, and at the end, we will have a Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to us in our Q&A section. There's a little area for you to type questions. We get those, we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Feel free to send them anytime during the presentation though, and we'll make sure we answer those after the fact. This will also be recorded, so you can watch this later if need be, or if you wanna send this to other people to see it as well. With that being said, really quickly, I'll introduce myself. I'm Alyssa Mathis. I am with Convergent Technologies, and I am the Aviation Account Executive for Convergent. So I work with all our local account executives. If you have a local account executive you work with with Convergent, I work with them to make sure we can get products to you that can help your needs every day. So with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to Brian and he will introduce himself. Good, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, depending on what part of the country you're in. Uh, my name is Brian Giampaoli. I am the Vice President of Sales with Shooter Detection Systems uh, for the Eastern Region of the U.S. Uh, I uh, appreciate everybody joining in today and um, coming with us and um, looking forward to uh, being able to present this information to you live and then uh, answer any questions you may have at the, at the, at the end. Uh, I'm just going to bring my screen up for you. Bear with me one second, a little technical challenge here. Okay, good. And um, uh, okay, so we will start the presentation. Uh, it starts very quickly with a short video, uh, which gives a good overview of our company, our product, and a good uh, framework for the presentation. And then from there, we'll go through the PowerPoint, answer any questions, and they'll give a little bit more detail on the solution. So with that, we will start uh, the, 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 the video. Is there any sound?
from from what I heard, uh, the sound did not come through on the on the video. I apologize for that. This is something we can share with everybody uh, after the uh, the presentation. You can contact Alyssa, and uh, we can share that a link to that that video with you. Um, just a few technical difficulties, but. Just uh, to, to go through the, a little bit of history of the company, we uh, started as uh, BBN Technologies doing um, gunshot detection for the military, pre, pre, uh, protecting our troops in Afghanistan and the Middle East during the wars. Uh, we have over three decades of experience in gunshot detection, moving the product into the Raytheon Corporation. We moved it onto aircraft, uh, mobile vehicles, and then also into uh, encampment protection of our troops while they're there. And then in 2013, uh, Christian Connors, who is our CEO, purchased the technology and all the, all the rights to the products. We repackaged, re-engineered it, and redesigned it into an indoor detection system from the outdoor. Uh, and that is what we're presenting today is the Guardian Indoor Protection System, so you can have a, a better understanding of what our product does. We did this in response to the fact that you know we had so many issues with uh, school shootings and things like that. We wanted to protect the children uh, and, and also our corporations from an active shooter in the property. What happens when there's an active shooter is that we all go through the ALICE training, but quite often we either get very little information we get incorrect information or we get no communication whatsoever. Um, so uh, we, we wanted to have a system that can take the human element out of the equation so that information is shared very quickly. And it also allows us to, to realize that time is the most critical and, and uh, critical element we have because the more time that, that is passing, the more likely we may have casualties within the incident. So shooter detection systems took the technology we had with, with the outdoor product, and as I said, we repackaged it into an indoor product. We actually have a patented dual factor authentication, which means we, we listen for a gunshot with acoustics, but then we validate that with uh, an infrared detector to make sure that um, we actually see the shot and we're not having background noises give false alerts on the system. This all happens within the sensor itself. So each sensor is self-contained and within less than five seconds, we can validate the fact that it actually is a gunshot and transmit that information not only to building occupants, but also to first responders so they have accurate information as to where the shooter is at in the building, what their progress may have been in their pathway through the property uh, and where they can get them very quickly to apprehend and mitigate any kind of, of further, further violence. The nice thing about it is there's no triangulation or uh, calibration required once the system is installed. It, it works perfectly uh, and we can detect gunshots anywhere from a small caliber, you know, nine millimeter or 22 caliber uh, weapon, all the way up to, to long, long guns and, and higher power rifles. Um, we have both a POE, which is a hardwired uh, sensor, and we also have wireless sensors. So it gives us a flexibility and option of different mounting and uh, installation options to best fit the needs and suit the requirements of the of, of your site. Um, the, the wireless system is a self-contained battery, so therefore it is fully monitored. Our system is a fully monitored system. We do get heartbeats both from our, our hardwired devices and our battery operated devices, uh, and it allows us to um, have a, a, about a one year lifespan on the battery so that, um, you know, when you do your normal annual maintenance and testing your system, at that point you will replace your battery. The sensors themselves will cover about 2,500 square feet. So therefore, if you look at the sensor and you look at it as a, a semicircular pattern coming out from the center, it's a 40 feet left, 40 feet right, 40 feet out center. It's a, so it's an 80 foot side to side. And that is covering about the, 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 20, the 20, 2,500 square feet of space. Your sensors can be either flush mounted, surface mounted, or ceiling mounted to best fit the area that we're trying to protect. When you look, or when we look at air, airports themselves, we say, what are the critical, most critical areas and where do we want to start? And we take a, what we call a tiered approach, looking at the property. So tier one might be, you know, your non-sterile areas, right? The terminals, the public areas, so baggage claim, check, tick, check, ticketing check-in, TSA checkpoints, anywhere where the general public can access your property. And that's the first area we look at to protect. Secondary area or tier, uh, the, the tier two, uh, we'll look at maybe employee areas, you know, such as baggage handling, executive offices, conference rooms, 
or maybe even the the aprons and ramps because we do have an outdoor system that can also protect the, the employees while they're uh, outdoors and on the property. And we'll also look at other public areas such as the restaurants and retail areas that are even within that sterile area. If you look at just uh, how we, we apply this, we just took a, a basic uh, a floor plan layout and then we, we, we measure the, the size of the system or the size of the property and then we just start laying those those sensors out based upon that that uh, 40 foot radius 80 foot side to side coverage and we overlay a icon that just says we look at the coverage and we try to get you know roughly 80 percent coverage of that space so you know looking at you know how would the sensors be located and where would they be located and we do take into consideration some of the architectural uh, characterizations of each site to make sure that the sensors blend in well within the space the system is designed, as we said, you have you have wireless and hard wire sensors, you know, so it is a full solution <clears throat> and you can mix and match hardwired and wireless sensors in one application so you could get the best of, of both worlds. All those sensors talk back to and give that heartbeat message back to our gateway software, and that is what is really managing your system. We call it the gateway and our gateway has a situation awareness, which we have maps available that will show what the system looks like and, and how it operates. That gateway will also talk with third party integrations or third party systems that you already have deployed within your, your facility, such as maybe your access control system, your video system, your um, digital display systems, uh, paging systems, the idea being that rather than having to wait for someone to call and give information the system is reacting to the fact it detected a gunshot and it is now sharing the information about exact location time date shot number information like that that is going back to and being shared with these third-party systems so that we can notify building occupants as well as building management where the activity is happening and give exact precise locations so that any first responders to the police department and, and our maybe medical teams can now know exactly where to go quickly and safely to be able to mitigate any uh, situation. We have integrations with several different products that are currently out there. This slide just shows quite a few of the different integrations we currently have. So more than likely one of the one or more of these companies you may have it deployed in your facility we can definitely integrate and share all that information with with these companies to be distributed out amongst uh, the property. If there is a system that we may not have an integration to, one of the things we can do is we have a relay interface so we can actually still interface and get very similar information to that third party system to be shared properly. Uh, it's just that rather than doing it through software, we'll actually do it through hardware which now allows us to integrate or interface with about 98% of the different products that are out there that you may have installed in your facility. Looking at what uh, kind of information is being shared when we do detect a gunshot, uh, you can see we'll, we'll bring a floor plan map up of the property. And if you look at the bottom left-hand side of this screen, this is a legend that shows what we call the shot history. In other words, it shows the most current shot will be a bullseye and flashing. And over time, the aging of the other shots in his in time frame will go from a bright red to an orange to a yellow. So you can actually follow the pathway that the shooter has taken or may be taking uh, in the property. On the right hand side of this panel of this uh, screen, you'll see the fact there's a, a, a shot number, a time, a date, and then information then that we will get that's pertinent to that that uh, sensor location, such as maybe physical address of the building, floor number, uh, maybe a reference point, an office or a, a conference room or something that is more location uh, driven so that the first responders and all the building occupants exactly understand where that, that shooter is. You also get a, a status of your system. Uh, we, we, we look at the sensor statuses and make sure the system is fully operational and functional. If there is any kind of a uh, a problem with the system or an individual sensor, you will get like a, a yellow warning light or gray offline. So within one graphical interface, you can see exactly what is happening to the system, the, the status of the entire solution and make sure it's a fully functional operational system for you. One of the things we look at is, you know, how do we make sure the system is operational? Well, we can test the system. You know, we talked earlier about with the wireless sensors, you do your annual maintenance on your system. This is how you can test your system. There are three potential ways of testing each individual sensor. 
One, through software, we can actually go and activate each individual sensor and test it and make sure it's fully functional. Second way is you can walk around with a weapon shooting blanks, uh, maybe after hours or something like that, uh, and actually test each sensor using an actual firearm. Uh, we do that quite often and, and, and uh, at facilities or when we do live fire demonstrations. But a third and more efficient way would be to use our patented tester that you can actually put the system in test mode. Then you apply the, the tester over the each sensor one by one. You activate a trigger on the, uh, the sensor and what it does is it sends electronic signals to test both the, uh, the acoustics and the infrared devices and to make sure they're fully functional. At the end of the, uh, the test, you can actually print up a full report that shows the system has been fully tested, fully operational, and you keep that for your maintenance records year after year. We are very proud of the fact that we are a patented system. In fact, we just received our patents here. Uh, and I'll just very quickly go over what the patents mean. One is the fact that we have it with video analytics. We can tie to video systems to, so that when a gunshot occurs, we can bring up that camera associated in the area with that and give you, I always say, we're, we're ears on the system, we're ears on what's happening. Your camera is eyes, right? Now you see exactly what is happening. We also have a patent for uh, gunshot detection during an ongoing fire alarm. We have seen uh, times where people try to activate fire alarms to create background noise to disturb and, and uh, cause um, interference with the gunshot detection system our system can actually filter out those background noises, filter out the flashes coming from the maybe your horn strobes and still fully function and, and operate and detect gunshots even with that. And that patent protects that. And thirdly, um, we, have a, we, we are patented for indoor environment, which basically means that, as I said earlier, there's no calibration or no um, triangulation need in our systems. Once you install it, the system functions year after year. There's nothing that has to be do, done to maintain or to continue to calibrate the system uh, after installation. We've also been certified by Department of Homeland Security under the Safety Act uh, as an anti-terrorist technology. Uh, and we've also been tested with, with other uh, governments like the, uh, the UK government and the Australian government to make sure that our product does fully function and operate according to what we state we do and how we do it. And they've actually tested it again under multiple um, situations to make sure that there are no false alarms. Some of the um, current customers uh, in the, in the uh, airline industry that are using our product is uh, Charleston International Airport, uh, Abilene Regional Airport, Los Angeles LAX, Baltimore, Washington BWI. Uh, we'll go through a little bit more what each one does. So at Charleston Airport, we've actually put in sensors in the TSA checkpoints, in the ticketing and check-in areas, and in baggage claim. That system is actually tied to a Genetech uh, video management system, so we can bring up the cameras to the Genetech. And also the Genetech system acts as a communication to local authorities and uh, um, also responders within the building, building occupants, so that on their mobile application, they can actually get updates as to what is happening, where the shooter is at, get live video, everything on their mobile devices. It also ties to the Secure 9000 system, so we can lock and unlock doors in different areas and allow people to move through the building safely uh, or protect them by locking down areas automatically with the system and it does we it does go out and send either email alert or smx texting alerts so the building occupants know exactly what is happening and where that shooter is at uh, abilene airport uh, again it's just uh, using our system with, with video and um, uh, access control systems so therefore tying it in and, and protecting that airport and uh, detroit airport is, is a, actually a, a customer for convergent We've done their administrative building because quite often people think when we talk about the airport and the air, air, airline industry, we talk about the terminals, right? And the concourses, we don't think about the corporate offices. And yet here it is, we actually protecting the administrative building, the executive offices, common areas like that. Uh, in fact, Convergent and, uh, and uh, SDS are both working with Tampa Airport to do both the terminal and the new uh, corporate office that's being built. Lastly, uh, at LAX Airport, we're also protecting the, the, the passengers as they're approaching the building. So we are now protecting the people mover system. So as customers are leaving the parking lots and waiting for their trains to bring them to the building, we actually protect them in, in the outlying areas too. Again, full protection of your customers and your facility, making it a safe environment for the traveling public. 
we we uh we we do uh, operate and, and are installed in many different verticals throughout the world and i think this this uh, slide speaks volumes about our functionality and our reliability the fact we have over a hundred million hours of installed operating time in customer deployments and we have what we call a zero false alert detection rate we have never had a false detection so real quick in summary when we talk about a gunshot detection system you know what is involved with that we have sensors both either hardwire or wireless we have our gateway software which is managing the system we have our the licenses that operate to make sure that the uh the third party solutions that we're integrating with are fully functional and working so your access control your video your uh, mass notification, we're all working together. And we have a tester that when you test the system, it actually tests all those connections also, make sure the entire system is fully functional. When you look at determining why you'd want to buy a, a system and who, and who you want to buy it from, SDS, as I stated earlier, has over 30, over three decades, 30 years of experience in gunshot detection. So it's our history, it's our experience, it's our certifications and patents that we now have. Uh, it's the fact we use trained installers such as Convergent as, as, as uh, our, our partners to offer first line of defense and support in our products once they're installed. We have all the different integrations and of course we have several customer references. If anybody would like to have a, a, a reference, uh, a contact of one of those references, just please contact Alyssa and we can get that to you. So why would you want gunshot detection? Well, obviously it's a life saving potential, right? It also demonstrates community responsibility. That's one of the things I think is the newest uh, uh, verbiage we're using. We want to protect the traveling public and that and any airport that deploys a system is now demonstrating that they have that community responsibility. You want to keep the business continuity, keep the airport up and running. Uh, so th therefore you don't want to have incidents that could shut the airport down. Uh, you also want to reduce your risk uh, of, of litigation and finally training value the fact that we can now train the occupants or build the management saying that with the alice training you go through of how to handle a a lot a uh, active shooter in a building we've taken the human element out of the equation all the information is shared quickly we can now talk about how they protect themselves and protect the public traveling public in in getting them out of the way of any kind of risk so at this point, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Alyssa. We'll go through the question and answer session uh, and uh, answer any questions you have. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I'm now going to present a little bit before we get to the Q&A just on um, the procurement vehicles that Convergent has that uh, you can use to purchase SDS and, you know, Brian mentioned earlier we have a shared customer in Tampa that is currently going through this and they are using Sourcewell to procure the system itself. Um, and so, you know, these are vehicles in which generally you have to go out to bid to get a system. These vehicles, they help you supplement that bid process. They're not helping you go around it or avoid it, but basically these companies, they have gone about and made us bid to get onto their contract vehicles, therefore ensuring that you're getting, you know, the best prices possible. But you're also avoiding that lengthy bid process that's also very expensive. As we all know, you know, it can take a year to two years maybe to go out to bid for a product that you need. Um, and then by the time you're getting that product, there's new technology out there that maybe it's evolved and it's gotten better since that spec was written. So this can help you really get through that process quicker. Um, so we do have SDS on two of our vertical or two of our procurement vehicles, uh, Sourcewell and Omnia, which used to be National IPA. If you have any questions about if yourself or your airport or your county, if you're run by the county or the city, if you're run by the city is on any of these vehicles, feel free to reach out to me. We can get a list and let you know which ones you're on. We do know that most of our airports are at least on one of these vehicles. So we can definitely let you know about that. If not, feel free to ask your procurement team. I can also help you, you know, talk to your procurement team about it, make sure they understand that, you know, security things and things like shooter detection systems and other technologies can be bought off procurement vehicles. A lot of times uh, I have people come to me and say, oh, well, we thought we just could get our janitorial services from there. And the truth is procurement vehicles are used for a vast majority of things. So with that being said, feel free to reach out. Let me know if you have any questions on that. 
So we will now move to our Q&A section really quickly. Um, so feel free to send any questions you have. Um, one question that we have for you, Brian, is if you have done any work with Safe Skies as SDS. Obviously not necessarily you yourself. <laughs> Yes, actually, as a company and as a product, we have been tested and vetted out by by uh, a National Safe Skies Alliance. So they actually do have paperwork that is available to any airport that would like to get a copy of that report. Yes, we have been fully tested. Awesome. Great to hear. And uh, just for everyone listening, I know because sometimes convergent people join and stuff like that. Um, Safe Skies generally only gives this information to the airports, not to companies like SDS or ourselves. So if the airport is wanting to see that, they have to reach out to Safe Skies themselves uh, to ask for that report. Awesome. Um, another question for you, Brian, is generally speaking, do you guys integrate into the video system or the access control system in your deployments, or is it kind of equal either way? We probably see a little bit heavier integration with video systems. As I stated earlier, you know, we are ears, the video system is eyes. Those are the two probably biggest uh, features or, or systems you're gonna need in order to better understand and evaluate what is happening on a site. But we do quite often tie also into access control. So therefore we can automatically have the system determine what doors to lock down automatically, what doors to unlock, trying to move the, 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 the building occupants out of the hazardous way as quickly as possible. So, but uh, it's probably a little bit heavier towards the video side. Awesome. So with that being said, obviously, you know, you mentioned you work with Genetech and many other companies. And I know that we possibly talked about this before when we've just talked about your system, but, um, you know, there obviously you have integrations with some companies, but let's say you don't have an integration with a certain company. How do you guys approach that? So again, as, it, as we talked about during the PowerPoint presentation, we have a relay interface board that allows us then to, rather than do a software integration, we interface through relays, through hardware, and still be able to draw, close a dry contact per individual sensor, which is then being uh, it, through software saying this relay is this sensor at this location, sharing information through that type of, of a uh, hardware in, in interface, still being able to do that so that we can inter either integrate or interface with about 98% of all the different products that are currently deployed throughout the world. Awesome. Um, kind of a question on, you know, maintenance and how long the system can kind of be standing. Uh, do you guys have like a certain time frame in which you say your sensors should be out there before someone should replace them? The sensors really never need to be replaced. Um, you know, we, we say right now uh, our mean time between failure and life's, life's uh, average life cycle of the sensor is probably about 10 years or more. Um, the, the technology is pretty stable as far as what it does through firmware updates and all. We, we've done some enhancements and maybe performance enhancements to the, the algorithms that determine gunshots. Uh, but overall, the system is designed to just go in and just continue working. Uh, your, your annual maintenance that you're doing on the system should be able to determine if any sensor has an issue or problem that you just address that individual sensor. That's good to hear. And do you guys recommend annual maintenance versus, you know, twice a year or every other year? Is that kind of your guys' standard is doing an annual maintenance check on everything? Our our recommendation is a minimum of an annual maintenance program. However, you know, based upon individual customer needs or maybe um, the actual service provider like Convergent, if they recommend a uh, biannual or a semi-annual, semi-annual inspection, we have no problem with that. It, that. All it's doing is that it's, it's shortening the time to find if there is any kind of an issue on, on the system. Good to know. Um, and obviously you guys have recently come out with your wireless system. And obviously now the sensors that are out there would be um, handled by a battery versus being wired and working that way. Um, how often does that battery have to get changed out? The, the lifespan of the battery is a little bit greater than one year. However, we recommend again, since it's an annual maintenance program and an annual testing, when you go to test your system and do your, your, your uh, preventive maintenance program, you change the battery at that point every year. Okay. There is there, uh, there also is an option on the wireless to connect an external uh, either 9 to 48 volt uh, DC power supply system. You can daisy chain multiple sensors together. So there is a secondary option to, to um, use the battery then as a backup 
But uh, if we're trying to make this a wireless system because there's a challenge in getting wires to it, that is the reason why we have the, the internal integrated uh, lithium battery. Awesome, great to hear. So it doesn't look like we have any other questions at this point in the Q&A section. Um, so I think we'll, you know, we'll end this live event a little bit early, give some people their time back, give you some time back. It was great to have you on, Brian. Thank you so much for presenting today. Alyssa, thank you for, for, for the chance to pre present to uh, the team and the, and the customers who are on board. I also would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And I would, will just reiterate, if somebody would like to have a copy of that video, uh, we had the challenge with the sound, just let Alyssa know and we can share a link to that video. Yes, and uh, this also will be posted as a recorded video and we will include the link on that post as well so that, you know, if you want to send it out to anyone you know or, you know, if anyone you know is asking about it, they can go watch that video and then also the link will be there to the video that didn't have sound earlier in the presentation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.